Now, it's something that I think everybody wants to avoid, but it has happened on many, many an occasion. What if your plan retirement date happens when we're in the middle of a falling stock market? Should you retire? Should you wait? A new uh, smart asset study answered that question by looking at two investors, Dan and Stan. Both of them had a million dollars with a 50-50 mix of stocks and bonds and a goal of withdrawing 4%. Dan retired. Stan decided to wait until the market bounced back. If we use the 2001 bear market as an example, here's what happened to them. Dan's $1 million went down to 833000 Stan, well, he waited a year. He had $1.3 million. Now, we always say you can't time the market, but it appears you can time your retirement. Does this factor in? Is this a consideration in some of your client meetings? Well, I, I think that is a good example. And I think, you know, the takeaway here is for folks that are looking to retire in the next five years, don't be in Dan or Stan's situation. So, you know, what happened there is, you know, Dan retired, Stan waited. Stan probably didn't want to wait to retire, but, you know, luckily he did because he let the market bounce back. So the important thing is, is they, you know, if you're within five years of retirement time, you need to be taking the steps now to be in a situation so you don't have your retirement subject to the lottery of the returns of the stock market because, The risk facing Dan and Stan are are real risk for people that have their money within the stock and bond market. And that's what's called the sequence of return risk. You know, if they move into retirement time and, you know, the market falls right away, I mean, heck, what what would happen if that, you know, drawdown in the market was a year after Stan retired? In this case, he hadn't retired, so he had the luxury to stay on and wait till the market came back. But what happened if Stan had his money in the stock and bond market and then the first year of moving into retirement, the crash happened? You know, it's already too late. So what you want to do is you want to get prepared for that ahead of time. If you're within five years from retirement time, I would encourage you to go on Google, type in independent income system. And the independent income system is going to walk you through how to get ready for retirement time using our strategy here of making sure you have money set aside for different time frames. Because the near term is is if there's a risk in retirement uh, in the first five years of you retiring and you're forced to sell off your investments at a temporary loss, that sequence of return risk can really get you upside down in a big, big hurry. Um And in this case, you know, I think Stan probably made the right decision, you know, with his portfolio was down, he decided to wait it out and let the market bounce back uh, versus in the other situation where maybe the risk for Dan is outliving his money because he had that big loss early on. I don't know. What would you say, you know, when you look at those two scenarios? I would say uh, Dan, was it? Uh, I guess the one that later, it kind of reminds me of, remember the Dan and Dave, the... uh, (laughs) The like Olympians, a, you know, back in the day. Oh, yeah. um, but I, I think um, he was fortunate, you know, enough to be able to do that. But sometimes if it's through a health issue or maybe you have to take off work to care for a loved one, you don't have the luxury of, you know, not retiring and sticking around. Or maybe you're let go. And, you know, unfortunately, maybe, you, you know, you're, you're kind of locked out of the market because of your age or getting back into the workforce. And so he was lucky to be able to... Um, to do that. But for clients that don't have that ability, um, I would say you're going to have to have a plan B. And and we always talk about, um, you know, we can't control the market, but we have a plan for it. And so that's why it's so important that, you know, you, you work with a financial advisor, particularly, I, you know, I'm obviously biased because I work here and we've helped develop the independent income system. But having multiple buckets of money that we could draw on in any circumstance. So we've got our emergency savings, you know, then we've got our medium term bucket, our longer term reliable income bucket. And then we've got our longer term and and, and ultra long term, if you will, bucket of money. And so the concept there is that, you know, if we run into uh, a situation where we don't have the luxury, the market's down, well, all of our money's not going to be in the market. You know, we've got something that's I call it tethered to the mountain. You know, imagine climbing a mountain, that foot slips, you don't have anything locked in. You know, you, you're not actually tethered to the mar- mountain. I know you climb mountains, Nolan, and um, the beauty of being, uh, of having, is that called a tether? You're basically like locked in the mountain. You can control how far you're willing to fall. And I think that's absolutely crucial to early retirees that you control, if at all, how far you're willing to fall. 
And so we have a dollar amount, maybe it's a money market, maybe it's a savings uh, to get us through the market correction where we have a bucket of money that we can draw on that we know isn't going to be exposed to losses. And we have enough money there for two or three years, you know, looking at the averages on market corrections. We talked about it earlier in the show. Market correction lasts no more than six months, uh, maybe a, a year uh, on average. In some cases, very, very few times, I think two or three times in history, were there back-to-back -back negative years in the stock market. So based on past history, we know that if we have two or three years worth of income set aside in something that's not going to lose, we can pretty much weather every storm. So I would say that's the importance of having a diversified portfolio and working with a financial advisor to make sure your buckets are filled appropriately and that you have a plan in case the market does come down right before retirement because you may not have a choice. You may be sick. You may just be tired. Maybe you're sick and tired. I don't know. <laughs> but um, you may not have a choice. The other thing that I would just mention to um, retirees is that age matters. So our industry is rife with, with a lot of uh, important dates that are based on your age, 59 and a half. So if you're thinking about retiring and you're not 59 and a half, you, know, you could be subjected to some penalties. Uh, however, there are some rules. The, the uh, 55 in, in separation of service rule allows you to retire early um, and not see that penalty, the 10% you know, uh, withdrawal penalty for accessing your retirement accounts prior to 59 and a half. The other thought too is on social security. Scott talks about this a lot and that, um, we don't think about this cause we're in the industry, but people think that you have to be retired to take social security and that's not the case. And so they hold off on retiring because they think that they can't you know, they, they want to collect social security or vice versa, you know, but that, because the two go hand in hand and that's not the case. If you're waiting to retire because you want to collect social security, you don't need to do that. You can retire and actually use some of your investable assets to bridge the gap to get you to the higher maximum social security or whatever the plan calls for with the highest probability of success. Um, also, you know, the age at which you start collecting Social Security matters if you're still working. The earnings threshold, the earnings test says that if you take Social Security and you're still working prior to your, 59, prior to your full retirement age, the government's going to ding you. They're going to take, you know, up to uh, $1 for every $2 that you're over $20,000 making in 2023 approximately. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're still working, you're thinking about taking Social Security, you're not 59 and a half. Uh, these are all age-related um, factors that matter when it comes to, you know, collecting and, 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 and retiring, you know, the way you want, when you want. Again, as we said, you can't time the market. The market's going to fluctuate. And, and so maybe the idea of not necessarily being married to a retirement age, but, you know, a retirement number, knowing when it's going to be okay for you to pull the trigger, clock out for that last time. And I think that all starts with having that plan in place. It's never really too early. To get, uh, to get started and serious about your retirement, it's certainly, uh, it, it's never too late. There just may be a little bit more work that needs to be done, but it all starts with a phone call to the team at America's Retirement Headquarters. Figure out where you stand, where you need to get. 419-794-3030 is the phone number. The website, arhq.com. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. As we always do, really do appreciate it. One more time, I want to reiterate, happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Uh, Nolan, happy Veterans Day to you. Uh, thank you so much for your service. And as we wrap up, I want to leave you with the final word. Yeah, again, happy Veterans Day, everybody. Here's a great quote, freedom is never free. So thanks for tuning in this week, folks. Uh, just remember, when you think retirement, think America's Retirement Headquarters. It's home of the Retirement Guys formula and America's Medicare Associates.